For the past week or so, I've been testing the Blumen 8 here and the reflection frame. These are pre-release prototype units, so they are not the final versions of what they will be eventually. But these are two of the first commercially available panels that we are seeing. Some of the others include the Ink Poster and the Allura Tech. These are manufactured by E-Ink and have been quite impressed in the past week. But I think there's some caveats and things that you should know about Spectra 6. So I want to walk you through that in this video and talk a little bit more about the technology. I chose to come outside because the first thing that you should know about Spectra 6 is that it needs adequate lighting to look its best. And so this is an ideal setting to look at these panels here. It's actually really bright though, so I'm going to throw my sunglasses on. I'll list all these manufacturers below if you want to take a look at them. I do think that photographs generally do not look as good as artwork or prints of some sort on Spectra 6. Now that's not to say that it looks bad, it just does get a film grain look and certain photos will look better. I've talked about this a little bit in the two lives that I did of each of these, but things with higher contrast will tend to look better. If it's a more dull looking image, it will not look as good, but if there's a lot of detail in it, then it still can look good. But the little minute details, if there are a lot of them in a photo, that can look good. And that is something we will talk about in a little bit, which is dithering, which is the way that the processing of these images is done on Spectra 6. So I'm tapping on the reflection frame right now to send over an image and it'll send momentarily. But you'll see this is another photograph. And this is an example of something that has pretty high contrast and looks really good on this because of that contrast shift in different areas of it. And you'll see the one thing about Spectra 6 is that it does take a little while to refresh. This one takes about 15 seconds and this one's 19 seconds, but those are not final numbers because of those big contrast shifts. It does tend to pop and it's got a good amount of detail in it as well. It is exciting to see Spectra 6 kind of hitting prime time in the commercial markets now. I was on a live stream with Ed from Organizing for Change, Roderick from Rants About Techs, and Jeffrey Moss. They all work in the e-ink space as well. But yeah, we talked about Spectra 6 and how it was like just like for digital signage. So it is exciting to see it coming to the market in terms of commercially available products, specifically for art. And then fast forward to January, I was able to see the unveiling of the ink poster at CES. And that got me really excited because I saw it in person and I was pretty impressed visually by what it was able to do. And that kind of brings us here. So it is getting ready for prime time now. The ones that I'm really excited to test are the bigger Sharp IGZO panels. I wanna see how much of a difference the IGZO technology makes in those. That would be the 28.5 from Bluminate or Ink Poster. And then in the future, I think they're planning, some of them might plan to release an A1 size when that's ready, that's about 40.5 inches. And that's when I saw at CES, which looked incredible. I uh, would love to test those, but these are both 13.3 inch panels. And so that brings me a little bit into some of the, the differences between these. So like any kind of panel, there is something called like the panel lottery. You know, if you look on the Remarkable subreddit, for example, the Paper Pro, there are wildly different white tones or gray tones, depending on like when you got it. And even depending on when you got it, it might just be different in general. Voya on My Deep Guide has talked about this. Maybe that's reliant on e-ink because all of these panels are coming from e-ink. So maybe there's not much in terms of quality control they can do there. I think that might come into play here. It's hard to test with a, a small sample size here. I'll show the same one on here while I'm talking about it. But things that could affect that are the panel lottery. So you'll see there's like slight minute differences here. Some things look darker, some things look different. The kind of dithering patterns look a little different too, depending on the algorithm they're using. And we will talk about the algorithms in a second. I do want to go into a lot more detail into that because that's something I'm still learning about. But in general, art and prints will look better than photographs will. That's just something I've noticed across the board. And then there's also maybe the source files could come into play, but there is a lot of tweaking you can do to get the final image. So whether that's playing with the light balance, playing with the vividness, the saturation, the contrast, all that. And so there is some tweaking, and I believe a lot of the, the apps 
we'll have that in the app so you can do that directly there. I know that Ink Poster was kind of doing like in the cloud and then they optimize it in the cloud and send it back. So that might be something that requires less manipulation, but we will we'll see. I won't really review any of these because they're not out to the public yet. And I only really do kind of long-term reviews and stuff that is actually on the market. This is just kind of like a first look and my impressions on these. And then I'm gonna pop another image on here. Birds are really chirping right now. For example, this has a lot of vivid colors. So once it starts updating, uh, maybe I'll even get a top down of this so you can see a little bit better in more detail. I've showed this Wired Magazine example a couple times because I do think it shows a few things about the colors and the dithering in terms of spectra and how it shows up well here versus Kaleido, for example, or the image source here. You can see there's banding on the Kaleido panel here, which is a result of not having dithering. And then on Spectra, here it is smooth, but not the smoothest. But then here you can see, like this, it transitions smoothly from green to blue, and it does so pretty decently on here as well. And I did it over macro lens, so I think I'm going to do a whole video on dithering and the different algorithms it can use. I do plan on doing a specific video with closer shots and everything. For now, you can kind of just see there, but this is a very high level overview. I will definitely do a very specific video with the macro lens and also looking at the different types of algorithms for dithering on spectra. And so I'll show you a quick video right now about roughly how dithering works. Dithering is a technique used to overcome rendering issues in images containing a limited color palette. For example, saving images for use on the web sometimes requires a file format such as PNG or GIF, which can't use more than 256 different colors. This can create posterizing or banding, an issue often found when using gradients that contain subtle transitions in color. To combat this, Applications like Photoshop use dithering to simulate colors the image can't display by using adjacent pixels of different colors to give the impression of a third color. But just a really quick recap of the reflection frame. This, uh, this really does feel like a finished product. You know, it's got the branding and everything. It's got the little sensors here. And uh, the matte is actually removable. So you can change the matte color. And right here where I was tapping it, you can see there's a little NFC sensor. And so that's nice because actually up here where I don't have Wi-Fi, I'm able to change images. Whereas this needs to be on Wi-Fi um, because this is a prototype, it doesn't have the SD card. But I've been impressed with the reflection frame. I like the dithering algorithm they're, they're using. I will be sending this back probably after this weekend. They told me they're already, they already have a firmware update for it. So like I said, because these things are pre-production, there's still a lot of things that are subject to change and that's why I don't want to fully review them. But the reflection frame's nice and um, I do like the NFC tapping. Uh, it basically works with the NFC pairing to your phone. So when you tap it, it connects your phone and then it goes over Bluetooth low energy and then sends the image directly on there. I believe they're going to have the potential to update remotely from the app as well, but that is not currently a feature. And then getting to the Bluminate, you can see the pass part out, or the, the mat here is bigger than the reflection frame, so it's a little bit taller, I'd say by like maybe an inch, inch and a half. But I can't comment on final hardware because you can see this is really a prototype. It's got like the little breakout board here, but this will have an SD card and should be compatible with the IKEA Rodalm frame, which uh, you can get at IKEA and then change the look or the color of it as well. Kind of like you can do to the mat here. I do have a Spectra 6 playlist where I've done some content on these in terms of live streams or the ink poster or other things in general. So I'll link that above if you'd like to check that out but I also did a live stream on these, which you can separately check out as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you the next one. But stay tuned for future comparisons. I will try to get final versions of these when they come out so I can properly compare them and look at the other ones as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.